As quilters, we make a lot of quilts. We use a lot of fabric, and we have leftovers, sometimes fabric, sometimes block, sometimes both. Well, have you ever made a quilt and had a lot of leftover blocks and wondered, what am I going to do with all these? How am I going to create a beautiful, creative quilt with these blocks and do it quickly? I have a solution. I think you're going to love it. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And first, I want to share a free pattern with you from Art Gallery Fabrics. It's a free download from their website, and you'll find the link below. You'll love it. It's awesome. And I use that as the basis for this quilt. And I call these companion quilts. When I have a larger quilt and I use leftovers to make a smaller baby or lap size quilt, I call them companion quilts. They make a great pair of of quilts as a gift for a mom and child or whomever the case may be. And this one turned out really well. I'm excited to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, here I am with another pile of half square triangles getting ready to make a quilt. And I have my first bundle here, mostly all finished. These are trim, but I needed a few more. So what I did is I took my half square triangles that were left over from the color dive quilt. You remember that with the large chevron pattern in the colors. And I made 80 half square triangles, but I went ahead and saved the duplicates, the other 80, for another quilt. So that was this. Then I went through and pulled the extra scrap fabric from the last quilt, that pretty pink and orange tulip pink fabric, and I went ahead and cut those into my five and a half inch squares and made half square triangles out of those. I was still about 14 short because I found a pattern that I wanted to follow. I really like concentric squares and concentric diamonds. They're kind of sort of the same thing. But I like how they look, and I like the, the staggered layers of, of those half square triangles. And I'll show you that pattern in just a minute, because I found one that I really like. And it actually gave me an idea of how to make this even easier. So you'll like that. So the steps are your first triangle, or excuse me, <laughs> no, the step is your first square. And we go with five and a half inches, two pieces. Now these are both batik, so the uh, right side together is almost a moot point. I can't even separate these. Look at that. Anyways, there we go. So I took two pieces right sides together and I drew a line from corner to corner and this is a cutting line it's going to be the guide we use to sew but you're going to cut on this so it really isn't critical as to what you use I used a pencil because it was convenient I've used ink before so that's step one we draw our diagonal then we come in and we sew a quarter inch alongside that diagonal we're going to go one end all the way to the other, and then we chain stitch and just add another one right to it. Then when we get to the end, we turn it around and come back in the other direction. So I have a bunch here that I've finished, and I just want to show you this. The other thing I want to show you, of course, once I sew these, I do press them, and I press them. I don't iron them and go back and forth. I press them because when you sew one direction and then the other and you have such a close area, you're going to get like little pulling in the fabric. And while that's not going to affect your block, I like to have my uh, cutting area nice and smooth. It just makes me feel better. But more importantly is it's going to set these seams. And that just means that it helps the fabric relax so that the thread can kind of get nice and snug inside there. And then that way, when you're pressing your final block, you're going to have less resistance for that seam to roll over and press nice and flat. Now, here's another trick. So I've sewn these together and you see those two threads, right? So what I do is, as I'm, I'll do this right at my machine before I even press them, but I didn't today because I wanted you to see how this works. You can use scissors, but I love my little nippers. And I will come in and I will trim 
that corner off because if, I'm going to have to trim it anyways. This way I get it done now and it saves me a bit of time. So I'll trim that one and I'll trim this one. So it cuts the threads and I lose those corner pieces and I don't have to worry about them later. It's just a time saver for me. Now you can imagine I have these little tiny triangle points everywhere when I'm finished sewing, but that's why I have a vacuum cleaner right here in my sewing room. I, whoops, got a little carried away. See, I can't talk and do this at the same time. So anyways, yeah, this is just another quick, uh, quick way to do it. And you can do what you're comfortable with. I just find this is a good time saver and it just eliminates all that thread and such. But notice all the little pieces. All right, so let's talk about what we do next. So they're sewn, they're put together, they're looking awesome, and we have nice straight seams. We just need to cut them in half, and we're going to cut on that line. So we want to line our ruler up right with the line that we drew, and that's that. So now we have two identical, remember, now you'll have two of a kind. And if you have directional fabrics, they may not be reversible, but you know what? That doesn't really matter in half square triangles, unless you have a lot of stripes and you really want to get them going. That's another whole process. But I stay away from that because I love the mix. So the next step here is going to be to press these to the darker side and then to trim them. I did want to show this to you after sewing it. See how we get those little bit of uh, wrinkles, sort of like the fabric stretching, and that's essentially what's happened. This is the bias, and when you sew one direction, you can see how it, it, it pulls the fabric that way, and you come back the other direction, and you get these, these little um, ripples. Now, this is fine because when I cut this, those go away, but that's just a... Uh, a way to look at what happens on the bias. You do have to be careful when you're pressing, when you're sewing, anything that you do, because it does stretch pretty easily. So that's that. What we're going to do now is do some trimming. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and I just lay my ruler from corner to corner and cut it down the center on the line. And now I'm going to go. The key when pressing is you always want to put the darker fabric on top and just roll it over like this. And then I come in with my iron and I'll come up towards here to hold that seam in place and then I'll go sideways. You don't want to go diagonally corner to corner because again we're going to stretch, we'll be on the diagonal. But we want to keep it um, so that our iron is in a line with the, the corners, north, south, east, and west, because that's going to be your straight of the grain. So that's just something to think about. With your half square triangles all pressed, they look beautiful, they're good to go. What we need to do now is trim these. I always look at the corner that I think is my best corner, and that's the one I'm going to line up. I'm going to cut off the rest. Obviously, I got a little close to the selvage here, so I want to make sure if I'm trimming anything off that that's the corner that goes. So I don't have to line it up on my grid because I'm going to use a square ruler. And this works out really well because it's a manageable size. Now, I also have a 12 inch that I use for bigger squares. Um, it's really good for log cabins, but for something like this, I'm just going to use this particular size. And what I want to show you is it's a six inch ruler. Every quarter inch is marked, but see this 45 degree line? It says 45 right there. It's the one that goes from corner to corner. Notice the 60 degree does not go to the corner. So make sure you line up with the, the correct line, the correct angle. And this line is going to line up exactly with the seam in your half square triangle. The second thing is what size are we going for? We want a finished five inch half square triangle. So everything I cut was five and a half because I need that half inch. Technically only three eighths, but I go for the half inch because I'd rather have a little extra to trim off than come up short. So I'm going to cut it at five inches, which is here and here. 
So the corner that I think is my best corner that I don't need to trim, I'm going to line up right here. And then these two edges should line up exactly with the fabric. And then this is what I'll trim is on that side. If it's kind of wonky and you don't quite get it on the first try, then spin it around and retrim on the other side. Um, it's just a matter of how it all works for you and your seam allowance and your pressing. But I do get them sometimes that are off. You know, I'll have my seam allowance maybe going in a, in a wrong direction or take too much. So it just, uh, just has an effect. Oh, and by the way, don't do this. <laughs> you do, you know, instead of fabrics right sides together, I sort of did a half and half. I'm not going to fuss with these right now. I'm setting them aside. But this is just one of those keep in mind things. Okay, five inches is right here. I'm going to line it at the bottom. And I have this five inch and this five inch. But most importantly is this diagonal line. And I'm going to either move my ruler this way or up and down to get it exactly where I want it. And so keeping it on that line, I'm making sure the fabric's inside here. The fabric is inside here. Actually, it's just a little bit outside. There we go. All right. Now, when you hold this, I do my fingers, you know, in sort of a, a spider grip. I just have them spread out to hold everything. But you can still sometimes get a little bit of movement in your uh, in your template holding it this way, excuse me, in your ruler. So pull your fingers back a little bit and put your thumb and little finger on the edge of the ruler, but also pressing against the mat. That's going to stabilize your ruler from slipping. So you're holding it in place with your hand, your thumb and little finger are pushing against the mat, holding it in place, but it's also creating a barrier that won't allow your ruler to slip and slide because that can be a bit of a annoyance. Okay, so you can see not very much needed to come off. And that's a good thing. Some, some squares are going to have more than others. And it's just a matter of what your seam allowance is and what was cut. But you put this on your block and you have an exact five inch um, half square triangle, which is awesome. Let me show you one more time. And I'm going to line it up down here in the corner. I'm going to put my five inch mark on the edge of the fabric and make sure my diagonal line is where it's going to need, need to be. My fingers are placed so that I'm holding my ruler where it won't slip and slide. And look at this beautiful half square triangle. That's all you have to do. So in the end, you know, besides all these little points and little strips, that all just gets thrown away. But this is really important because once you get these together and they're trimmed, they're going to go into um, the quilt so much easier. You'll be able to sew these blocks together. They line up beautifully. You can put them and see they're right on top of each other. They're the same size. Some may go this way. Some may go corner to corner. Now this is something to think about. I do press mine all to the darker side. But when you're putting your quilt together, you're not quite sure just how the design is going to fall. And sometimes you may have to go back and sew this open like that so you get a good nested seam and then have to repress it. But we'll talk about that in a little bit um, once I start putting this pattern together. Now, I had an idea of what I wanted to do with these half square triangles. And I wanted to do, you know, kind of fun, bright, colorful, but random. I didn't want a pattern that was going to require lots of fussy placement. I just want it to be scrappy so I can put everything in there. And so I was going through some of my videos that I've done previously and just doing some Google on half square triangles. Lo and behold, didn't I find a free pattern online? I tell you, Art Gallery Fabrics has some beautiful patterns. And I, I like going to their site because they do have some really, really nice patterns. And I am anxious to show you this. Unfortunately, my printer started losing on the colors. So these are the colors that the quilt is done in. But this is exactly what I'm doing. This is a 
uh, just a square. It's an even square on all sides, half square triangles. And notice how the colors are randomly placed. So that worked well for me. But what I liked, do you see these squares? These are what we call concentric squares or concentric diamonds or diamond in a diamond. And I really like this. Now, sometimes when you do this, you make sure that one row has all lights and one has all darks because then you get more of a contrast and these rings actually stand out more. But I'm not interested in that. The reason I like this pattern is, let me get my ruler. If you'll notice, we can cut this into four quadrants. And then these, let's see, where am I? I can't see. Then these four quadrants are exactly the same. So if you look at this one, the half square goes just diagonally across, and they're all in the same direction. Do you see that? Turn this. This is the same one. Look at that. It's exactly the same. So what we're going to do is create four quadrants just like this, we're going to sew them and press them all exactly the same. And then when we put them together, we're going to take one and turn it. Take another one, turn it. And the last one and turn it. And we get this beautiful pattern. Oh my goodness, it doesn't get easier than this. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing this. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a few minutes. All 144 half square triangles are sewn together. And I sewed them into sections of six blocks and I chain stitch the whole thing because if you remember we want to get four quadrants that are six by six and that's going to be six across six down and then we join them all together so I just wanted to start putting them row by row and I chain stitched everything to just see how it would look and it was completely random I did kind of divide my piles into primary colors, like I had a group of blues, a group of purples and pinks, and so I just wanted to make sure that I rotated through that so that I had a good mix of colors, and and I think I worked out pretty good doing it that way, and I'm kind of anxious to get my uh, my blocks made and see how they look. And so there's really some fun prints in here. There's a lot of good... Um, sort of dark background kind of colors that that help balance out some of the bright brighter colors and I like that the yellows mixed in to add some nice bright spots but yet there are some darker more neutral colors so there's a good mix in here that I think works out really well so now what I'm going to do is count out six so for example I've got one two three four, five, and six. So let me just make sure that I have that correct. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what I'm going to do is cut this apart and I'll cut each group of six apart and I'll get them pressed and I'll piece them together. So that's the next step. This goes together very, very quickly. It's a great and easy layout to use and it's fun for a ton of prints. So let me go ahead and get these pressed and I'll show you how this is gonna look. And it's finished. It looks wonderful. I can only show you one quadrant at a time on the table, but I'll do a uh, big shot of it in uh, just a moment and give you a overview but I think it came out wonderful it's fabulous and I think all these colors look at they go so well together and that diagonal line really stands out so I think what I'm going to do is do a quarter inch quilt stitch uh, following the diamonds and just sort of work my way from the center out. I think that'll be kind of a fun way to quilt it. So I'll make sure that I do a video for that so you can see how that's done. But just all these colors, aren't they wonderful? They're just so bright and inviting, and I think they look fabulous. Okay, let me show you the whole thing. 
And uh, up on the wall, I, I think you're really going to love it. This came out good. And here it is, the finished quilt top. I love it. It is so pretty. And I'm excited. I can really see the distinct lines of each of these diamond squares inside of each other. I knew the concentric square pattern is just what I wanted, and I'm so pleased it turned out this way. Now I have a plan already that I'll do the quilting around each layer, and uh, I think that's going to look absolutely awesome. It'll really create an emphasis for that particular pattern, which is what I like. It's been a fun quilt to make, and I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you give it a chance, give it a try. Get some of those scraps or half-square triangle orphan blocks you have laying around and, and go for it. Uh, it's a wonderful quilt. It's fun. It's easy, and it looks beautiful. Thanks so much for being here. It's always a pleasure to share my quilts with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you again soon.